Okay, Year 7, we are on the final section of the topic weather and climate. So throughout this topic, we have looked at what weather and climate means. We've looked at ways that we can measure the weather through things like um, anemometers, weather vanes as some examples. We looked at factors that influence the weather. So how far away you are from the equator, how far up um, a mountain you are, so to do with the relief, how close you are to the sea or whether you're inland, as some examples. We then looked at air pressure, so high and low pressure, and that how high pressure is associated with very dry weather and how low pressure is associated with very wet weather. We then started to look at, at climate graphs, so we were describing and drawing our own climate graphs. And then we started to look at the UK in a little bit more detail. So we looked at the weather that the UK faces in different locations and you described some different um, climate graphs. And now we're moving on today to look at extreme weather in the UK. So this gives us a little um, indication of what extreme weather is. And then in your next and final lesson, we're going to be looking at a case study known as the beast from the east. So make sure you have open all of the appropriate documents whilst we're working through this video. And remember to pause after each task so that you have an opportunity to complete the activities. Task then one, task one then, sorry, is what is extreme weather? So you have been given a bank of images and you have to identify um, what image is trying to show what type of weather hazard and then describe or write down a definition for what you think extreme weather is. So you can see in these images, we have lots of different things. We have very large storm waves, which could suggest that it's very windy and that could lead to flooding which we can see in this image here. We've got lots of ice and snow here, which is a massive problem in terms of like travel and disruption. This orangey, reddy colored choropleth map is showing high temperatures. So we could have heat waves, which is what is being shown in this image there about the Daily Express, hottest day in history, meltdown Britain, and there's more to come. And it was 102 degrees Fahrenheit. So what is extreme weather then? Extreme weather is weather that is different from the average or usual weather pattern. So extreme weather is weather that is different from the usual weather. So it's like having a heat wave in December. That's not normal. It's like having lots of snow in um, June. That's not normal. So that would be classed as extreme weather. Okay. So let's look then at task two, which gives examples of the UK's extreme weather events. So what I would like you to do to, for task two is you have got lots of different information on the board. We've got things about drought. So when the UK experienced a drought, so that is when there's very, very little rainfall. We have flash floods. So that's when lots of rain falls very, very quickly. We have strong winds and storms. So it might be like gale force winds. So I'm going to start to actually write these things around here. So gale force winds for that one. I'm not going to do that. Flash floods is when rain falls very quickly. So the rivers flood. Drought is when there's no rainfall. So it's very dry. Extreme cold spells is to do with like snow and ice, which we've experienced a lot of recently. And then extreme hot spells are the opposite. So you might have known things to be called as like a heat wave. And then that can lead to a drought. So I would like you to make a timeline. So when you're making a timeline, you need to identify which date is first so we have a date from 2003 so we'd have 2002 possibly if we go up in twos we then have 2004 2006 
2008 all the way to 2018. And then you would write down what happened on those weather events. So you would pause it here and draw a um, timeline similar to what you would do in history and annotate your timeline with all the different weather events that the UK has faced. And a little challenge you could do is you could actually go away and do some research and see if there's any more that you can add to this timeline. Task three then is um, one of our key word definitions. Now you can see on the previous tasks, task one and task two, that the UK experiences very, very different weather. And we kind of already knew that because when we were looking at climate graphs for the UK a couple of lessons ago, we it was very clear that places like Dundee in Scotland had very, very different weather to places like London, which is in the southeast of England. And this is because of air masses. So air masses is a, are known as a large body of air. So they're a large body of air. And within that body of air, they are all the same. However, not all air masses are the same. And that depends on where they come from. So you can see on this map, I've circled the UK. And depending on which direction this air mass travels to get to the UK depends on the weather that it will bring with it. So for example, if the, so if I draw on the equator here, we know that at the equator, the sun's rays are the most concentrated. So if the air mass has come from the equator, it's going to bring with it very hot air. Whereas if it's come from the poles, so this is the North Pole, if it travels to the UK from the North Pole, it's going to bring with it very cold air. So we know that the temperature can be influenced by air masses, but so can um, land and water. So that can have an impact on the amount of rainfall. So if the air has traveled overseas, so if it's traveled through the Atlantic Ocean, so over oceans, it will bring wet air. So it might have lots of rainfall and lots of clouds. However, if it travels over the land, so if it comes from Russia or if it comes from um, any part of Asia or other parts of Europe, so it's traveling over land, it's going to bring very dry air because it's got nowhere to pick up that moisture from. And that is why the, the weather around the UK is very different. And that's because of where it has come from. So make sure, please, that you've written a definition for an air mass and given examples of how air masses are different depending on where this air has travelled from. Task four, then, is our final task. And we need to know the names of the different air masses. So there's lots of different air masses that we need to be aware of. And they either have two names. They're either classed as a continental air mass or they're classed as a maritime air mass. Now, maritime actually means um, it's to do with boats. So that's to do with the sea and water. Whereas continental is to do with the land. Now, we know that if they're traveling over the water, they're going to bring wet air with them because they're going to be able to pick up moisture from the sea. Whereas if they're traveling over the land, they're going to bring with them very dry air. So we can see here that number one, two and four all say either maritime or continental. So if it's traveling um, over continents, it means that the weather will be dry. OK, if it's traveling over the sea, it means it's going to be wet. Now, number three is different because it doesn't tell us where it's coming from. But we know if we actually look at the arrow, it's traveling from parts of northern Africa. So it's traveling over continents, which means that this one here will be a tropical continental air mass. Because it's coming from North Africa. So this is going to bring with it 
very hot because it's coming from the equator and very dry weather because it's coming over a continent. So what about number two then? Well, number two, and you might want to look back to task two to look at the world map, is traveling over um, Central Europe. So it's coming from um, Russia and then through most of Eastern Europe. So it's traveling over continents, which means it's gonna be dry, but it's traveling from the pole. So it will kind of come through like this. So this is known as a polar continental air mass, which means that the weather will be dry and cold. And this type of air mass is responsible for our snow and ice. So our very, very cold weather. At the top here, this is traveling over the Arctic Ocean. So if I put in the Arctic Ocean up here, we can see that this is a maritime one and it's traveling from the Arctic, which means that its name is called the Arctic Maritime. Which means that the weather is going to be very wet and very cold because it's traveling from the North Pole. So what about number four then? Well, number four is classed as a, a polar maritime. And this is because it's coming from the poles as well. So it's kind of similar to this one here. So it means that the weather's gonna be very wet and also very cold. So the weather here will be quite similar to the Arctic Maritime. Now there's also another air mass that I haven't added to this, but I am gonna add it on now. So I'm just gonna remove all of this here. So there is another air mass that we find approaching the UK here. And this is called the tropical maritime, which travels over the Atlantic Ocean which means it's going to be wet, but it's traveling from the equator, which means it's also going to be very hot. OK, so think about in the summer when, um, you know, it's, it's quite that like sticky, humid weather that could be coming from the tropical maritime air mass. So make sure, please, that you've annotated your diagram to look exactly like that one. And if you want to do a little bit more research, you could go onto the Met Office or onto BBC Bite Size and they will give you some other examples of the different air masses and the weather that they bring to the UK.